Welcome back to my channel and today we're going to demystify the 5G mobile internet. Now in my previous video we looked at the Nokia 5G T-Mobile home internet and we did several speed tests at home, my home, and we got some lousy results. And then we did some crazy outdoor tests and we got some amazing results. And what you might not know that is that T-Mobile internet uses different tiers to achieve 5G speech, which is consistent with the bands that the Nokia modem observed during my tests in my previous videos, which you can see right over here. So if you want to understand how the 5G works, this video will help make it clear. Now that the T-Mobile network has been out for several years, we can pin down how these different tiers work to help achieve 5G speeds. So stay tuned and I'm going to explain it all to you guys. So when it comes to the radio spectrum, just to simplify a bit, the 5G smartphones are analogous to a radio dial capable of tuning into multiple types of frequencies and multiple types of frequencies at the same time. Now it's similar to an analog TV with a dial that can turn left to right and that can pick up from channels from 2 to all the way to 100. Now if you turn to the left, the TV will pick up just the audio signal. In the middle, the TV will pick up both audio and video. If you turn all the way to the right, the TV will pick up 8K video, surround sound audio, the whole enchilada. Now, the old 4G phones were able to tune into the left and middle, but not to the right. Now, the 5G phones can pick up either all three or just the middle and right, but not the left. So when it comes to 5G, the left side is called the low band, while the middle is known as the mid band 5G, and the right is called the high band 5G. Now as shown in the photo, the T-Mobile has depicted the three types of signals as a layer cake. The red is the low band tier that covers a lot of space, broad, broad but slow. The yellow covers less space but at faster speeds, and the red covers even less space at super crazy fast speeds. Now, in a quick summary, this is how T Mobile works in the real world. The one low band 600 to 700 towers can cover hundreds of square miles with 5G servers that ranges from 30 to 250 megabytes per second. The mid band can which is the 2.5 to 3.5 gigahertz towers can cover several mile radius with 5G that ranging from 100 to 900 megabytes. And lastly, the high band, which is called the multimeter wave, is the 24 to 39 gigahertz tower that can cover one mile radius or lower. They're delivering speeds to one to three gigabytes of speeds. So the low band 5G is illustrated by the bottom layer cake. The low band spectrum can be understood as a blanket layer for national wide coverage. It will provide a base layer of 5G virtually everywhere in the United States. Now the low band transmit on the 600 megahertz frequency once used for TV broadcasts. So one low band 5G tower can serve several customers within a 100 mile square radius, enabling coverage in even far flung and rural locations. Now the T-Mobile low band frequency peaks are somewhere in the neighborhood of 225 megabytes per second, which is six to seven times faster than the common 4G speeds in the United States today. However, low band 5G depends on where you live and it comes in real world tests, it comes nowhere close to those numbers. As you can see from my 5G download speeds, I never achieve speeds any higher than 30 to 40 megabytes during my tests. However, that speed is much faster than 4G speeds even observed on my Pixel 3 XL. In most case scenario, the low, low band 5G will be a little bit better than 4G with a guaranteed of widespread coverage and the 600 megahertz signal ability to pierce windows and walls. And that's not a bad starting point for 5G and it will get much better from there. Now when it comes to the mid-band 5G, it's depicted by the yellow central layer of the cake and like 4G today, it's likely to become available in all metro 
areas in the United States across every major carrier by 2020 at least. So in the United States, Sprint was already offering the mid-band 5G using the 2.5 gigahertz frequency, while in foreign countries, the mid-band 5G generally uses either somewhere around 3.5 to 3.7 gigahertz frequencies. Now the mid-band 5G is also known as the sub-6 gigahertz because it includes radio frequency ranging from 2 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz, all which have similar speeds and distance characteristics, but may or may not be available for cellular use in certain countries. Regardless, towers built within with the mid-band radios can offer s service within several, several miles radius, shorter than the low band, but further in the high band, well, in part because these carriers can allocate larger chunks of transmitting spectrum to mid-band 5G than low-band 5Gs, and data speeds are more markedly higher. Now, outside the United States, including China and South Korea, carriers are and phone makers are currently promising peak mid-band 5G speeds in the two gigabytes per second range, but more commonly deliver around 600 to 900 megabytes peak. Now, chip makers are expected to deliver roughly five gigabytes per second speeds over mid-bands and upcoming chips in the future. And Huawei said it was going to achieve 6.67 gigahertz peak using mid-bands in Switzerland. Now, within cellular industry, it's clear to everyone that at this point that the mid-band 5G will be the sweet spot for 5G distance and performance, assuming if you live in a couple hundred miles of a tower. Now when it comes to the high band 5G, the small red tier at the very top of the cake represents the high band millimeter wave 5G. Super fast but very short distance towers that are ideal for dense urban environments and public gathering places that are frequently serve huge number of people, like the Super Bowl. At one point, some carriers suggest that the millimeter wave 5G would be the one true 5G solution, but in the past couple of years, the conclusion demonstrated that the millimeter wave uh, small cells is not feasible. The maximum range for the high band 5G antennas are recently proved over to just over one mile, and though the millimeter wave signals are far more susceptible to physical encumbrance than low band and mid band, buildings and urban environments knock the distance down roughly to 70%, and certain types of glass and walls can snuff out the millimeter wave signals altogether. Now, if you're near one of these towers, you'll see peak cellular speeds beyond your wildest dreams, real world numbers between one to three gigabytes per second, which is say in the neighborhood of 30 to 80 times faster than today's typical 4G connection, which is maxing, matching or exceeding current top tier home broadband packages. Now Qualcomm and Samsung are raising the bar even higher and saying that the latest 5G models can pick up speeds to seven gigabytes or over millimeter wave. Though there's been a lot of discussion between the chip makers and the carriers over the fuzziness of what 5G performance should be in the real world, the numbers that I mentioned in this video are based on actual testing, so there's a fair baseline for what 5G would be like if you decide to upgrade to a 5G phone. Now, if you work or attend events near a um, high band or small cell or a mid band tower, you can expect to see wicked fast data speed and something that you may want to jump on in the near future. Now, conversely, if you live in an area that has only low band 5G service, you'll likely to see a, at least a small or modest bump in speeds that next time you upgrade. Now, T-Mobile announced uh, announcement of new 5G cities and additional 5G tower should be fairly frequent in the foreseeable future. But when a high-speed 5G tower goes up, it gets saturated. Many users carriers will need to add 5G capacity to the tower, and or even switch users to the 4G towers. It's a process that will continually continue on onwards as the T-Mobile continue to upgrade the towers and 
decommission the 4G towers. Now, over the next couple of years, we'll need to focus on what phones or home internet devices are capable of tuning in, low band, mid band, or high band. So that's all I have for today. So I hope that you found this video helpful and help dismissifying the 5G technology. This area will always continue to develop as chip makers and carriers will further improve the technology. Now, if you liked the content of this video and found it informative, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe buttons. If you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, leave in the section section below. Until next time, peace out.